Today we're heading over to Epcot for the International Festival of the Arts. And as we're looking at these paintings, which is probably arguably one of the most fun parts of the International Festival of the Arts, but I absolutely love the food selection here too. We're going to go through a lot of food. I mean, I'm talking about probably close to 25 different items at a multitude of different booths, as well as things that you can get year round. So I'm super stoked to spend that time with you. Uh, enjoy the art for now. And in roughly about a minute and a half, we're going to get into all the food reviews. And there's a ton as we walk around Epcot. Thanks and enjoy. <laughs> That Lumiere is cool. I like how these ones use different materials, I not love just mixed media. Yeah. It does, which today, sadly, no dad joke yet. I'm going to have to put one up later on today. Oh, you're good. Figment is life. Anyone who tells you different doesn't know. I don't know what the time period is that they run the chalk for. Like, how long does each artist get? Because obviously it's weather dependent, but beyond that. Um, I can tell you that I was over here early in the week and a lot of this wasn't here. So there are some new ones that have gone up just in a couple of days. Um, I do know that the, the forced perspective over here on the right, that took a couple of days because I was here a couple of days and I saw it sort of come, start coming to life. I should have taken some time lapse of it. But then you would have had a set there. Here at the World Showcase, and we went to Pop Eats. What do we get? We got the tomato soup with a bacon grilled cheese, and then the almond frangipan, which was on the colorful walk last year, but it is not this year. And then I've heard really good things about this Bloody Mary, which has a really fun little top that you gotta take off. Um, so it's a little resealable plastic one. So let's check them all out and see how they are. All right, just went to Pop Eats, and I'll read it off the book so that uh, I'm saying it all right. We have the tomato soup with French onion and bacon grilled cheese. Then I got the almond frangipan, which is a layered cake with raspberry jam and Belgian chocolate. And then last but not least is this uh, Bloody Mary, which I hear is quite good and comes in this cool little plastic cup. I've heard it's quite spicy and one of the best Bloody Marys on property, so let's get into it. Okay, first up, we're gonna go with this, uh, <laughs> this grilled cheese, this bacon French onion grilled cheese. It's perfect. The caramelized onions, it reminds me exactly of the top that you would get on French onion with the bacon on there. Good salty, good crunch on it. And then, and there's cheese baked on the outside of the crust as well. And then even better is the cheese mix is definitely a Gruyere. Really good French cheese. Let's try this tomato soup. I got my spike beef fork from a year and a half ago. <laughs> Running strong. The soup is terribly cold, but it's got good flavor. I'm not a, uh, one of those people who like studies <laughs> the gastro parts of cooking and, and chefiness, but there's some sort of micro foam on here that's definitely flavored. That's a good grilled cheese, I just or a good tomato soup. I just wish it was a little bit warmer. So on the 
grilled cheese, I'm gonna give that a, I'm gonna give that a 4.1. Fran Japan. Which to me, like, is Fran Japan like Marzipan? Like one of those dummies who, French, French Japan? Do you, not, do you not watch the great British baking show? I don't. Ooh, the raspberry jam is really good. Interesting. It's very thick though. It's less cake-like and more, almost like a fudge. It has the texture of a fudge. One thing I love about uh, just Festival of the Arts is the colors that you get. Like, that's the reason why this is my favorite festival. Everything encompasses the theming here. I could eat this whole thing. I don't even think it's that good. I just could eat it all. It just is, it's, it's interesting enough to be flavorful and have that almond, that deep raspberry and a little bit of that dark chocolate, but it's not overpowering either. And even though it's thick and dense, it doesn't feel thick or dense in a sense of like heaviness when you eat it. Oh, it's pretty good. I'm gonna give that a, uh, I'm gonna go a 2.9. Bloody Mary time uh, comes in this like little plastic soup cup with a little lid and it's got a tab on it. All it is is a plastic little cup with a sticker on it though. It's got croutons, it looks like cilantro or maybe parsley on, on top, probably parsley. So it has some spiciness to it, which I think is what makes, I'm leaning on a trash can because I'm classy. Uh, it has some spiciness to it and you definitely get the alcohol punch. So you're, you're getting vodka and you can taste the vodka. I would, I would like to see a little bit more depth of the tomato come through and also a touch more like horseradish because I don't really get that kind of vibe. It's good, but it's not crazy good. It's, I don't know if it's the best Bloody Mary on property. I haven't had enough of them. They have that over at, I'll, I'll try to hold this very gently because we're in product showcase mode and it'll freak out. But if you go into La Cava Del Tequila, you can get a tomato margarita which personally, I, I think that might actually work better than this. Uh, it's just not spicy enough. There's not enough tomato characteristic. I kind of am looking for like a super spicy tomato soup that's a little thinner with the alcohol there, but the vodka that they use has a lot of, uh, it's not like a capsaicin burn, but it has that, that warming quality. So there's, there's some heat on the booze. Uh, I'm not crazy about it. I'm going a 1.7. The 7th season again. Now, what's in the Seven Seas Lagoon? You know, I, I couldn't tell you. A lot. Is it like a fishbowl? Yes. Yeah, it's a lot. And it's got uh, gummy, like fish. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm gonna put this on the ledge, but do, don't take it yet. Okay, bubble time. Yes. We'll see if the wind is. Look at that gun. Look at that thing's scary. <laughs> All right, ready? I'm ready. All right, now I'll pop it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we are outside of the Mexican pavilion, and so I get it right. I'm gonna read. This is from El Artista. Ambriento, and I got the Frida Carrot Margarita, which had a lemongrass bubble on it, which just popped like a second ago. So, hmm, I sloshed that pretty good over the side, but that tequila is delicious. So this is Casa Noble Blanco tequila, which is the tequila you can get at La Cava with carrot juice, ginger cordial, which I'm not crazy about ginger lime juice, and then agave nectar. This is a really well-balanced drink. The ginger is punchy and herbal, but not overpowering. The carrot is just a nuance and mainly for color. And then that Casa Noble, maybe I'm like just like a freak for, uh, for tequila, but it's, it's a really good cocktail. 
Uh, I got a little bit of the lemongrass smoke on it. It's interesting, but I'm gonna give the Frida Carrot Margarita a, a 3.4. And then this guy is the Taco de Chocolat, which is a chocolate candy shell filled with Mexican chocolate mousse with a touch of chili topped with tropical fruit. So it looks like mangoes on the side and pomegranate and then today. shreds of maybe cucumbers. No, what the your nose and mouth and on at all times do some sort of taking photographs. The exception would be when eating That's a strawberry or syrup on the side. Yes, that do not comply. Will be oh, this is this is a this is a two-hand guy. Chonkataga. Chonkataga. Nose when coughing and sneezing and maintain physical distancing. Thank you for your cooperation. I don't get the chili, but the dark chocolate's delicious, and then the mousse has this richness, like a baker's sweet chocolate, and then you got a mango relish with pomegranate, and then let's see what this is. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Pretty good, though. If you like chocolate, you like chocolate mousse. It's pretty delicious. I'm gonna give that a... 3.8. I definitely would get that again. <laughs> and this has one of the largest lines of any of the places. So definitely get here soon and early. And if you got a steady hand, probably get the bubble. The, uh, the troll horn. I've never actually had the Kringla, which is on the, the front. Looks like a pretzel. So I'm gonna try this soft flatbread with cinnamon and sugar. Hi. Hi. Can I get one? How do you pronounce that? Lefsa? Thank you. Thank you so much. Enjoy. All right, just gotta pay. All right, so here, outside of Kringla on the back side, behind me is Royal Summer House, and the best bathrooms on the planet in Epcot are over there. This is the Lepsa. So Lepsa is a rolled flatbread with cinnamon, sugar, and butter. It reminds me of when I was a kid. My mom used to make something very similar to this with white bread. It's like a giant tortilla too. One of the most affordable treats too. This is only $3.49. Trying to determine if what the bread is made of, like what kind of flour. It's actually, it's like a white flour. It's not like a corn tortilla, but I like it. It's not that sweet. Almost all the desserts here at Ringla are not that sweet. I mean, the school bread's not that sweet. The troll horn's not that sweet. I haven't tried the actual Kringla here. This looks like a pretzel with chocolate and almond on it. Oh, this is really good. I can eat the whole thing. It's small, but affordable. I'm gonna give this bad boy a 2.4. when it comes to hot food. Well, nothing says pretty like seaweed noodles. Okay. So, so I get this right. My handy dandy. Although, it is listed on here 
on the Walrus Carp Foodie Guide, a festival of the arts. This is the Szechuan Red Hot Mala Shrimp, which is served over seaweed and noodles. So like a, looks cold, like cold noodles. All right, I'm gonna have to eat these shrimp first, which shrimp are tempid at best in terms of temperature. They're not hot at all. And they look lightly, lightly fried, but not tempura. It's a little soggier than that, but there is red chili flake and looks like a lot of chili powder on there. Mmm, good flavor. Price point, you're getting hosed here because it's, it's over 10 bucks and you're only getting two shrimp, but. All right, time to try the noodles, which do have a little bit of sauce in them. Big rich sesame oil right up front, and then that Szechuan sauce. They are served cold, and it's a thinner, almost like if there was an angel hair equivalent of ramen noodles, is the vibe here. Mm. I'm such a sucker for Asian food too. I'll eat this whole entire thing. And I'm super biased. I wish the, the shrimp were a little bit hotter in terms of heat, but it's very tame. It's just not hot shrimp by any stretch of the imagination. They're good though. Great flavor, great spice. And the cold noodles are good. So, on the Szechuan shrimp, that was a pretty dish too. Very, very solid. 4.2, just kick up the heat and you got something really special. Hi, can I get one of the Coco Vaughn and one of the Opera Cake, please? Anything else? That's it. I've never heard of Coke de Vin. Here we are outside of the German pavilion. It is called Cuisine Classique. We got the opera cake, which, shame on me, I am not prepared to read exactly what the opera cake is. Almond, jacond, coffee buttercream, and chocolate ganache. And then I also got the coca von, which looks very fancy. This has chicken roulade with violet mustard, candied carrots, Pancetta crisp, marble potatoes, and a burr rouge sauce. I butchered everything that that was supposed to be, but let's give it a go. We're gonna start off with savory first. So the chicken, Coco Bon, looks delicious. Especially like this, the look of this roasted carrot. I'm gonna just pick it up, put this sauce on it. I feel like in House of Wonderland, when Alice bites the carrot to get smaller, and the white rabbit feels like his hand was just bit off. <laughs> okay. Oh, potatoes have a nice seasoning on it. It's like, like a smoked paprika. Pancetta crisp, just looks like straight up bacon. That's very good. And I'm super curious about this chicken roll. This is where the spork fails. Mm. Should have grabbed a knife. I got it. Okay, this looks really good. It looks like it's filled with mushrooms and other kind of veggies. Lots of herbs. Like, it reminds me of beef wellington type herbs. So, thyme, rosemary. Mmm. That is fantastic. The potatoes are good. The skin adds this awesome richness of fat. And the chicken is very tender. And it's dark meat too. Mm. That is really good. Uh, wow. Yeah. Get this one. Definitely get this. 
Mm. I would have just ate that whole thing. All right. Coca Von, 4.3. This is so good, and I'm going to finish all of it. It's a good bite size, too. <clears throat> now for that coffee, chocolate, ganache, opera cake. Which gets a lot of rave reviews. Let's see. It's like a layered sponge cake with some mousse, some buttercream in there. It reminds me a lot of like a tiramisu, where the cake is soaked in almost like a Frangelico style liqueur. Or at least that flavor, that hazelnutty flavor. The chocolate ganache on top is really good. And then let's try this chocolate piece on top. You're a chocolate fan. I think you'll really like this because there's a lot of chocolate. This much coffee, it's noticeable, but I don't know if I would pick it out if somebody didn't mention it. So, opera cake, 2.6. It's got almost like a maple flavor at the back end too. But, all right, let's check out the Germany Pavilion. Are you a Caramel Kucha fan? Uh, I, I am. Me too. I love that we can use our annual pass holder discount there too. You did, but uh, I was surprised to learn that at Everglazed that you can use your annual pass holder discount there. I didn't know, normally, and I'm excited to do that. Normally when they, a new restaurant opens up, they're not included. So. I feel like I'm in uh, The Godfather every time I'm here. All right, so here in the Italy Pavilion, these are bombolini, which are Italian donuts with raspberry sauce. And I don't know if they're filled. Yeah, I think it's got like a little sweet cream inside. I'm gonna bite one so you can see a cross section. Well, there's powdered sugar on top. Reminds me of like a deconstructed munchkin with the, the jelly on the outside. And the cream is like a Bavarian cream. It's a straight custard that, not very vanilla, but yeah. If you like Bavarian cream, you'll be into this. I'm not crazy about Bavarian cream. It's one of the few donuts I'm not into, but I like the jelly aspect. And I like that they're pop them, so you can just throw them in your mouth. No big deal. So I, I definitely recommend them. I, you know what? The only thing I don't remember is price. I think it was like in the $8 range or maybe $5 range. If it's closer to $5, it was higher than that. Was it 8 No way. Now I gotta check the source. It's Germany. Oh my good lord. <laughs> Ooh, 11 doll hairs? What is that, impression Franks? Really charging me. That better be in uh, Lira. My gosh. Yeah, I wouldn't get them at that price, but ignoring that and just going on flavor, the Bombolini are good. They're getting a solid 3.4. Hi, how are you? Can I get one stone garden and one vegetable uh, gyoza? Your sushi donut looks good, dude. I'm digging it. I gotta DIY that up. That is like 
build your own adventure. So it's playing with your food. The real question is, what kind of raking job do I want to go? I feel like I'm going... Oh, you definitely rake that up. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's filled with one of the least appetizing flavors of all time, which is uh, red bean mousse. I just can't, I love Asian flavors, but I just don't understand how red beans can be dessert. Yeah, well, over in, over in China, they've got the red bean ice cream that you get as, uh, as a dessert when you get a meal there. It's not very feng shui, but... I don't know. Yeah. It looks like you rocked to me. I rocked it? Yep. I guess I'm taking it for granted. <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right, so just outside the Japanese booth here for Festival of the Arts, and I'm gonna start off with the sweet rock garden that has a red bean paste underneath. To be honest, I am not excited about this. It's, it smells so vegetal, it doesn't smell like a dessert. Oh my god. This quite possibly was one of the worst things I've had. Oh. At least the little rock chocolates are good. It's the only thing saving this and the only thing I'm gonna eat from it. It's so weird. It doesn't even taste like beans to me. A bean mousse is dessert. I just can't get into it. Point one. Ugh. That's bad. Cute, but terrible. All right. Um, hopefully this is a lot better. We're moving on to the savory world. This is the vegetable gyoza fish cake on there, which normally you see on ramen. Pretty cool. We bought it. So fish cake is good. Vegetable koyozu with a tonkatsu sauce. I don't know what the bottom is, the base. It looks like mashed potatoes, but I know it's not. I mean, it's starchy, whatever it is. No, it tastes like mashed potatoes. And the tonkatsu kind of tastes like, uh, tastes like a brown gravy. Hmm. It's good. And I like the, the gyoza is really good. I would definitely get that again. Real light. That red bean garden though. Which, there is a Zen garden behind me, which, fun fact, the largest one represents Buddha and all the smaller ones represent Buddha Sadhavats, which are people who have achieved Nirvana, but I've decided to stay on the earth to help other people get out of suffering. Very altruistic of them. Gyoza, 3.6. No, I'm good for I like the tile work on the Muska. Yeah. Tooch or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty. All right, here we are in Morocco, which I didn't even realize that they had these really nice, cool little tables, but we got the flatbread and we got the orange cinnamon mousse. So let's start off with the flatbread. The flatbread is with za'atar pesto, artichokes, roasted peppers, sun-dried tomatoes, and a fennel cream, which this thing was only $5.75, which if it tastes anything decent, this is the best in show in terms of value of the entire fest. This is a very large portion for under six bucks. That pesto is really good. You wouldn't like it because of the artichokes. I got Scott over here. WDW Twit on the gram. He's not an artichoke fan. And you do get that texture, that mushiness of artichoke. It's not very crisp. Um, I like the cheese that's on here. But it's on the dry side, so like, when you think about this as a flatbread, think of it as flatbread. Like, this is not a pizza-type dish. 
This is more of like a crackery bread, almost. It reminds me of sometimes you get those like really thin breadsticks at Italian uh, restaurants. A little less crunchy though. I like the flavors and that Mediterranean spice level is great. The zatar and then the fennel cream is very good. I like it. It's just a touch on the dry side. A little bit more fennel cream or a little bit more cheese or something just to connect it and you got a really good dish. So I'm gonna give it a very solid 3.1, just lacking a, a tiny bit. And now we're heading over to the, I'm gonna horribly butcher this for the 12th time, the muscatchow, muscatouche, I don't know what you call it, but it's this orange cinnamon mousse. It's the first thing on the wonderful, uh, wonderful walk of colorful cuisine. So very, all the way on the top, already got my first stamp. And then once you get all those stamps, you get that free cookie at the end. I do like on the bottom of this, it has mosaic tiling, very similar to, and it's made out of white chocolate, very similar to what you see here in the Moroccan pavilion. Good cross section. Wow, very surprising, very surprising. We were talking about how I thought this was gonna be really bad and that is not the case. This reminds me of those, sorry, I got a hair on the lens. It reminds me of, you know those orange candy chocolates that you smash them down and they break apart into little slivers? That's what it tastes like. It's this great milk chocolate mousse over like an orange marmalade style cake. I don't know what this, this green secret of the ooze is coming out. What is that? Now, let me read from the book. The book might say more. It doesn't. Orange cake with cinnamon orange chocolate mousse. I think it's quite good, especially if you like those those uh, orange chocolates. A lot of people think it's mousse, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really look like a mousse. I would say it looks more like a cake, but you know. All right, uh, on on the mousse, I'm gonna give it a uh, a 2.9. What did you think? Yeah, if it's like a ceviche, I mean, I guess the octopus probably turns people off. My favorite part. Okay, so new segment. I gotta back up. Oh yeah. Cut off me and a little bit in the frame. So we got Scott over here at WDWTWIT, the Walt Disney World Twit. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna try a new segment together because he's always ripping on me online about my decimal points with a new segment. We're gonna call it Taste It or Waste, Waste It. it. So we're gonna try two things and we're both gonna give our take on uh, what we think it is. So we are over here at Vibrante or Vibrant and Vivado Food Studio and we're gonna start with the Blue Corn Papusa, which is on the Wonderful Walk color trail. So I got a little stamp for it. It is Blue Corn Papusa stuffed with cheese and topped with shredded pork. It's guajillo. Arbol, chili sauce, cabbage slaw, and ahi amarillo crab. <laughs> We're gonna get you into some remedial <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> My dude. My Spanish is so, it, un poquito. So, all right, taste it or waste it. So, okay, yeah, is this okay. something that you would enjoy again or would you throw it in the trash? I, there's a lot here, so. I, the one Just going on size. There's a good portion, and the, the cost wasn't that expensive. No, this was in the, the five, six dollar range. Okay. Ah. There are layers here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can get all the layers. I just got the shredded pork. There's a lot of mm. spice to that. Mm. So if you like a little bit more of a kick, this actually has more kick than that Szechuan shrimp. Yeah, there's some nice, good pepper pieces in here. You can see it. Okay. And, and if the spice is too much, that blue corn comes in to balance it out. Because it's it's really kind of bland, but... 
it, it lends that starchiness to kind of pull you back from the heat, dial it down. I'm not throwing this away. I... Does it work together? Can you get the so, pork and the... What's interesting is when you get to the center of the pupusa, there's actually cheese inside mm. of it. So you gotta kinda, that adds a whole nother vibe to this thing. Okay, this is, it's become a project now. Oh, yeah. Just to get in there. It's no longer pretty. No. I destroyed it. Are you next to the table? What? Are you next but to I do the like table? cheese. Mm. Hey, it's like a cojita cheese. A little bit, a little bit stringy, but a little bit more flavor than a mozzarella. Yeah, alright, so taste it or waste it on the blue corn pusa. What do you think? I'm giving it a taste it. Yeah, I'm going taste it too. I would I would this definitely recommend this. Bomb. I'm, I'm glad that it's on the uh, the color trail because I don't know if people would even think to get this. Maybe they see shredded pork and they would try it, but yeah, you can't go wrong with definitely this. Definitely taste it. Alright, and then the next one we got, which this does come with a really cool little plastic. Yeah, it looks like a can glass. This is the Epcot International Festival of the Arts or Farts plastic cup. This is a coconut and passion fruit smoothie. Taste it or waste it, Scott. Cheers. Cheers. Which you said you actually got this chilled seafood cocktail, and that's a is that a taste it or a waste it? I like the chilled seafood cocktail. So that would be a I taste. Thought it, was, it. I, it was for me. It's not going to be everybody. An octopus? Maybe you don't like tentacles. I love tentacles. Who doesn't love tentacles? I don't want. I don't want to know people who don't like tentacles. This is good. This is a good combination. Refreshing after a little bit of that heat. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I, I think they sell the passion fruit daiquiri. Would be my guess is the alcoholic version of this. Uh, oh, this is delicious. Go, go with this. It's a better version of the creamsicle that you get at Citrus Blossom because that passion fruit just adds this tropical punch to it and almost like an acidity too, like a lactic bite. All day long. I would drink this all day long. I would definitely get, this is another taste it. Taste it? For sure, taste it. Yeah, and it comes with this cool little cup, which you actually could drink out of this where the cup that I got for the uh, the Bloody Mary, that thing was so small. This this is maybe a 10 ounce. You say that's a 10 ounce cup? Yeah. Serving's probably, what, seven or eight? It's delicious. It pairs well with the spicy meat. Mm -hmm. I think it, it, and I think it would go good even with the uh, chilled seafood that I had. Yeah, so I think that's another taste in. For sure. Yeah, it's really good. Sweet. All right, let's head and get some more food. My own pulled pork. I actually um, I smoke pork. Having been having lived in Kansas for a number of years, I, by law I had to learn to to make brisket <laughs> and pulled right. pork. So yeah, I think this is delicious. This so, thing is a little rubbery. I'm going. But, I got to go back to even though we did taste it wasted. Yeah, I got to give it actual scores. Give it your numbers. Okay. On the blue corn pupusa, and I'm with you. I think this this corn cake layer could be way better. Uh, I like that it has cheese inside of it, but it's not enough to, it's too starchy, it's too starchy. So <laughs> I'll give it a, uh, I'm gonna go right down the middle of the road at a 2.7. I like the flavors, it just could be developed a little bit more. Uh, this thing is nuts, That's this is a 4.6 all day, every day. I am such a fan of passion fruit and coconut, forget it, forget it. You have a passion for passion fruit. I certainly do. All right, and then, I didn't get into this when we were doing our taste it or waste it, but this is the passion fruit mousse, which is filled with dragon fruit jam. When I saw this online, it reminded me of back home. We have a a tasty cake company where they make these butterscotch crimpets and jelly crimpets, which is a sponge cake filled with injected red jelly. That's what the inside of this reminded me of. So I'm curious if I'm actually on that, but it looks like it has that gili on it. Okay, so texture, this is not a sponge cake. This is a straight up mousse all the way through. Mmm. And then it's got, to be honest, this is gonna be really hard, so I'm gonna try to pick it up and eat this cracker thing. 
Oh, it's like a shortbread cracker vibe. Hard to eat, but the moose thing is delicious. Mm. A lot of that dragon fruit jam coming through, which I did have a request on my Learning with the Land series to do and cover dragon fruit, because apparently they grow it. Never noticed it, so have to be more observant when I'm in the land today. Oh man, they really put a lot of jam in there. Texturally, that's my only thing. It is very jiggly. It's a jiggly tree. 3.1. The texture was more like cake, I'd be into it more. cherry pistachio cake was a part of the colorful walk. So pistachio cake, these are kind of like one hitters, little, little one and dones. It's a pistachio nut cake. This is a cherry mousse. A little medicinal. I'm not crazy about cherry, but I get it. I'm still gonna knock it 1.3. It's just not for me. I think it's executed pretty interestingly, and I, I like the textures. You just have to really like cherry, which unfortunately I do not. And I'm betting it's my second to last on the colorful walk. Remy's, Ratatouille. This looks like a watery mess to me. My brother-in-law said it was one of the best things that somebody had here. So I'm curious, but eggplant and squash and zucchini are very wet vegetables. <laughs> you really need to dry them out to do it well. You know, I think I know why he likes it. It's seasoned well. There's a lot of salt. The layers are good. But it tastes like I'm eating salt water. You get the texture of the eggplant and the flavor of it. A little bit of the yellow zucchini, the, the green zucchini's gone. And it's just salty. You could use more of this tomato sauce, which actually has a really rich, flavorful herb garlic vibe with a lot of deep tomato, but yeah, that saltiness. That's all I'm tasting is the salt bomb. But it's not as watery as I thought. More sauce, this would be way better. 2.3. Right, this is the last of the treats to get us to our computer cookie. Which I, I love. This is like one of my favorite things about having to go in this queue is you get the little deer prints. Yeah, that's what I like too about over at the little wilderness wolf lodge and seeing. Mm -hmm. Like, what is this? Is that a rabbit? What is that thing? <laughs> it does look like a rabbit. I don't know. It does look like a rabbit to me. <laughs> you can love. This is Masterpiece Kitchen. This is the panna cotta, rosewater panna cotta. Like shattered instantly. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be a lot harder. Uh, I thought it was gonna have like a. I'm guessing that's white chocolate on the outside. This is one of those texture things where I'm not gonna like it at all. It has the same mousse and inside texture as that 
dragon fruit mousse over at Vibram. This is a wiggly treat. Oh, and it tastes like a flower. I feel, I get why it's rose water. I wish they didn't make this one, so you had to get it for the uh, color trail or whatever. Oh my God. It's like chewing on a hedge. <laughs> like, I feel like I, I literally bought somebody a really nice bouquet of flowers and then just ate all the tops. <laughs> that's disgusting. That's a, that's a point one. Ooh. In my dumb head, I thought that they actually tasted better. Well, they were in smaller batches probably than McDonald's. Or the big Lobster, lobster, bisque cheese sauce, pickled jalapenos, and a citrus cream. I'm all about this life. Okay, today, where are we at? We're at Canada, just outside Canada. Canada's that away. Refreshment Ports Lobster Poutine has pickled jalapenos, a citrus crema, a uh, lobster bisque gravy, and uh, whatever these peppers are. They look good too. I think those are the peppers you were talking about. Lots of claw meat here, so I'm going straight into this piece of lobster without any of the bisque. It's chilled. Was yours chilled? Yes. Your, your lobster? Good flavor. Oh, the bisque gravy is delicious. Mm. Fries are always good at refreshment port. Uh, and that citrus crema is nice too. Let me try this jalapeno and then I'll try everything together. One small gripe. According to Wikipedia, this is not poutine. It's just stuff on fries. Poutine has to have gravy and cheese curds. But, poutine is a selling point, so you write poutine on it, more people will buy it. <clears throat> so, I, I'm not crazy about the chilled lobster claw, but when you get the lobster bisque on top, and that pickled jalapeno has some capsaicin heat, a little bit of kick, I like that. And then the citrus crema in there to kind of round it out and balance it. Good starch, the fries are, are balanced. They're not really salty either. I like the poutine. I always get the food at refreshment port. You're never disappointed. For 10.52, too, you get a lot of lobster. A lot of lobster. Mm. And if you like lobster bisque, that's basically what this is, is lobster bisque fries, it's a better name for it. I think they would actually sell more of it than poutine. Because people, everybody loves lobster bisque. All right, lobster bisque fries. I'm gonna go, because I would like the lobster heated up, I also think they missed an opportunity to pop it into some butter. I think if you threw it in some drawn butter, we're elevating this. Because it's, it's missing some fat. It could use a little bit more fat in it. Uh, I'm gonna go a straight 3.0. I like it, but just needs a little bit of an elevation. Hmm, still good though. Complete her cookies next. It, it crops like crazy, but it's so needed because I have shaky hands. Now, surprising they don't put it up here, so I don't know if you can get it on its own or you have to complete it to get it. But we've earned it. Hi, I feel accomplished. I did something. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Here's your cookie. Yeah. Thank you so much. Darn it. I wanted to check your strawberry ice cream thing. Where was the strawberry ice cream? Well, you said that you could sub out. The oh, for strawberry. the pretzel. And I'm like, I didn't see that when I was there. We did it, complete our cookie. Very excited to try this. Accomplished the entire 
Festival of the Arts wonderful walk of colorful cuisine. We had the uh, mouse kuchu, <laughs> the Moroccan. It was that orange cream. Then the blue corn pupusa, Remy's ratatouille, the pistachio cake, and I'm gonna have PTSD from that panna cotta rose water. <laughs> and now we've gotten the completer cookie over at Decadent Delights, which very similar to the mini one from the cookie stroll. It's another shortbread with really cool looking fun, and although this one is 3D, where the mini one was that like paint painted on, or this actually has some texture texture to it. Interesting. This is dry, terrible mess. <laughs> Pretty much like every cookie. <laughs> I still have fun being forced to try things that I wouldn't normally get. Like I would have never gotten that rose water panna cotta. I wish I wouldn't have had to have gotten it, but it, it puts you into a different space, so. I do think it's valuable to, to try these things. It's fun, especially if you're here and there's a bunch of you. You know, you can split it up. Everyone works off the same passbook, and uh, and then you can all try the completer cookie at the end, which is just a dry shortbread that's awful, but really cool looking. Very Instagrammable, but just disgusting. <laughs> I don't know about disgusting. It's just vanilla fondant with a dry, non-buttery shortbread, 0. 0.4. <laughs> 